I think it's time for us to hand over to our host for the day now. He's a, a VC, management consultant, advisor, and tech entrepreneur, and uh, he is the CEO of Innovate Finance. Since stepping into the role in 2015, Lawrence has led a period of ambitious growth and expansion for the organization. He's been named as one of FinTech's most powerful deal makers in 2016 by Institutional Investor and recognized as one of the country's leading advocates for FinTech, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Lawrence Wintermeyer. Thank you for that kind uh, welcome. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Innovate Finance Global Summit, our members' summit. Welcome to the Guild Hall, the home of global fintech, and welcome to the kickoff of UK Fintech Week. So we do have over 2,000 delegates here today, I think from 25 global hubs, 30 countries, uh, 500 founders and executives from our over 300 members, um, and this is our members' summit. Last year, I was often asked where the term fintech comes from. Um, I heard the term first used as a venture capital uh, category, ad tech, uh, martech, medtech, clean tech. Uh, but the first ri written reference I came across to fintech was Citicorp 25 years ago for a smart card interoperability project. So how far do you want to go back in, in history? Uh, internet banking? Uh, the NASDAQ, uh, the first computerized exchange, uh, the cash machine, the credit card, uh, maybe right back to the stock exchange, um, or coin, paper currency. Uh, my, my favorite is the invention of debit and, and credit. Uh, financial services using state-of-the-art technology and the technology of its time has a long history. Today, digital is the greatest accelerator in the history of financial services. And Baron Anthony Giddens, one of the most prominent UK sociologists, uh, believes that uh, we and humankind have come to a crossroad. Digital is moving at a faster pace than social anthropology. And he offers three inventions that have really come together to deliver us to this crossroad in history. Uh, the first one is the mobile phone, the supercomputer in your hand. Uh, the second is artificial intelligence, the app that knows what you want to do before you do. And the third is the internet, you know, connecting you 24-7 to everyone and everything in the world. Putting access, intelligence, and networks into the hands of eight billion people uh, challenges central control, government, and corporations, and creates many new forces for humankind, both good and bad. So how privileged are we here today to have someone who knows more about this uh, than anyone else in the world? Sim, uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the internet, we'll be hearing from a bit later. Uh, the question I've been asked most recently is, what is the impact of Trump, populism, and Brexit on fintech? And I actually preferred the first question L last year. It was a bit easier to get through. So Trump, well, too early to tell. Uh, since the early indications of the repeal of the Dodd-Frank Act, we haven't heard much. Um, what we do know is that there is a high degree of collaboration between US institutions and fintechs. And in 2016, the US led fintech funding rounds with over 650 deals, you know, pretty vibrant fintech uh, ecosystem. Populism, too early to tell. Uh, Mohammed Al Aryan believes uh, that the advanced world has lost its ability to grow in a high and inclusive manner. And when that ability is lost and people lose confidence, things start going wrong and, and start to break. He said this last year uh, when an increasing share of the government's, uh, the government's debt was yielding negative, 
and, and before many had actually heard the words Trump, populism, and Brexit. Brexit, too early to tell. Uh, the government must ensure that the UK remains the most attractive uh, fintech ecosystem in the world through attracting global STEM talent and investment while developing our own homegrown talent and investment. As importantly, the government must continue its program of building fintech bridges to global hubs. Immediate fo immediately following the referendum in the UK, we had a bumper quarter in fintech funding with four of the largest deals of 2016. And VCs referring to Brexit, and that, that, that is the referendum, as a blip. Investors tell us that they invest in talent, and it's talent that creates great companies. And we have an abundance of talent here in the UK. Innovators tell us that they see opportunity with political change, and innovators and startups are very agile and have a very different view of risk from most of us. While innovators and institutions are well capitalized, profit from risk, and have global franchises. So whilst it's too early to tell the impact of Trump, populism, and Brexit might have on fintech, our members remain cautiously optimistic about the future and are just getting on with business. Uh, the UK government has led the way with progressive policy. Uh, the competition mandate has been translated into an innovator-friendly uh, environment for digital acceleration, with the Financial Conduct Authority launching Project Innovate, the Regulatory Sandbox, and the Industry Sandbox Consultation, and the Bank of England launching the FinTech Accelerator. As part of UK FinTech Week, on Wednesday, the Financial Conduct Authority will be hosting an international Innovate Forum for 90 global regulators. And Treasury will be hosting an international FinTech Investment Conference for over 300 investors from around the world. The UK Department for International Trade hosts FinTech trade missions to global hubs. And this is one of the most highly rated programs in our membership community. Over 100 of our members have participated in these missions and give the DIT a big thumbs up on these. Regional hubs in Scotland, Leeds, uh, Manchester, and London are all part of a formidable UK FinTech ecosystem. Uh, the City of London has been visionary in its support uh, for FinTech and for cyber. The City of London's Network Action Group convenes trade and industry associations and bodies to lobby for FinTech, and the group's developing a response to the Patient Capital Review, the government's review of getting long-term capital into the UK venture ecosystem. The City of London Police run a National Fraud Intelligence Bureau. The Bureau is nationally coordinating the response to digital financial services crime, fraud, and cyber, and it's a beacon for global best practice. All of this in, in the UK is fintech leadership in action, and we partner very well with the global community. I'd like to thank Canary Wharf Group and the City of London, Innovate Finance's funding sponsors. Uh, we wouldn't be here without your benevolent funding and support. Innovate Finance is a not-for-profit. Institutional membership fees and sponsor support allow us to deliver services to startups who join for £1,000. Benevolent funding and pro bono hours are critical to getting us over the line. I'd like to pay tribute to Mark Boliat, the Chairman of the Policy and Resources Committee at the City of London as he serves his final weeks. I consider Mark one of our founding fathers, and he's led the charge in investment, governance, and policy leadership for Innovate Finance. And Mark, you've been a personal advisor to me, and I thank you for your wisdom, your patience, and your support. We wish you well in your new role as the Chairman of Link, and we'll miss you. I'd like to thank the Innovate Finance Board under Alistair Lukies for his leadership and their unwavering support. Al and I have been aligned on what Innovate Finance needs to do since we very first met. I'd especially like to thank the Innovate Finance team. <clears throat> we deliver more than 70 curated programs to you over the course of the year, and your high approval ratings of what we do uh, really gives us a great sense of purpose. 
You cannot win championships without world-class players and, and world-class players that know how to win a cup final. And I have the best team in the game. Most importantly, I'd like to thank you, our members, our startups, our growth companies, our financial institutions, our technology firms, our professional service firms, and our partners. It's your drive to innovate financial services that's nothing short of awe-inspiring. We invite the global community here every year to your summit so that you can show the world our fintech talent and leadership in action. You're delivering the di digital big bang of financial services, open banking, API marketplaces, digital currency and assets, personal financial digital assistance, encrypted digital identities, and universal access to a range of financial services, all available to our citizens and businesses. The UK has the blueprint for the best fintech ecosystem in the world because of our fintech talent and leadership. We've been innovating financial services here in the city of London for more than a thousand years, and long shall we continue. You, our members, have been given more and better tools than any generation in history to undertake this bold mission. And it's you leading the drive to innovate the future of finance. Our mission is to serve you, and it is a privilege for me and the team at Innovate Finance to do this. Thank you for listening. Have a great summit over the next two days, and enjoy UK FinTech Week. Yes. Lawrence, thank you. Next. The keeper of the keys of this spectacular venue and the home of the Innovate Global uh, Finance Summit. Our host has been a vocal supporter of FinTech and will be a familiar face to those of you who are Innovate Finance members. As Lawrence described him, he's one of the founding fathers. He recently described London as a city of true innovators, where finance meets tech to create limitless opportunities. He is a true champion of business and this city. Please welcome Mark Boliad. It's great to be welcoming you again to Guildhall for the Innovate Finance Global Summit. It's been my pleasure to open this event on three occasions now, and with every opening I am staggered at both the numbers coming into our Guildhall and the breadth and depth of your discussions. The achievements of this event have far surpassed our expectations. The City of London is very proud to remain both a lead sponsor for Innovate Finance as well as an active supporter of the fintech ecosystem in this country. We recognize that this community offers an exciting opportunity for all our financial, professional, and related services businesses, large or small, across all sectors of the city, and indeed in all regions of the United Kingdom. We believe the value of fintech is in how it not only underpins our financial services, but also how it is evolving in support of our economy and society at large, connecting with potential consumers and those disenfranchised from our economy, thus underscoring a fairer, more transparent and inclusive economy for the 21st century. In the UK, we are taking significant strides to lead on these themes, advances which will not only benefit our economy, but will also benefit the economies of our global trading partners. And yes, that includes our European friends and allies too, and we are delighted to see so many other fintech centers from Europe represented here today. On that latter point, we acknowledge that some of you may be feeling a bit less confidence than perhaps you were a year or so ago. It seems that not a month goes by when the challenges to our economy seem to increase, stemming perhaps from a greater sense of unease in the world at large. But let me reassure you on what has not changed in the last 12 months and what won't change. Firstly, London remains a global hub for financial and professional services, with recognised strength in depth for our finance and tech expertise. 
Secondly, the UK's comparative advantage as the centre of competitiveness and innovative thinking in our regulatory ecosystem has set the global standard for fintech. And thirdly, the city remains a leading access point for finance and capital, especially for new kinds of digital businesses seeking to fund further innovation in products as diverse as blockchain technology, artificial intelligence and robotics. We at the City of London Corporation know that you don't succeed merely by standing still. And even after 800 years, this organisation knows only too well that success lies in continued evolution and change. Sometimes that change is physical. In the 1980s, the deregulation of financial services, the Big Bang, changed the city landscape forever. Gone were the gentlemen bankers with bowler hats of yesteryear, and in their place arrived the large multinational firms, often housed in newly designed glass and steel towers. The towers remain, but the nature of those businesses inside continues to evolve. We now live in the area of digitization, a second big bang, if you will. As a consequence, many startups and scale ups in tech are also now located within the square mile itself. I'm therefore delighted to announce this morning a major new city fintech cluster, which will open in Broadgate in the coming months. And we're pleased to be supporting this fantastic initiative led by Innovate Finance. This development marks just a first yet very significant step in the expansion of fintech businesses in the square mile. The City of London itself continues to evolve, and I'm particularly pleased to have had the opportunity to announce this development today. Developments such as these are very welcome, and I believe a real endorsement of the focus of the City of London Corporation has taken in support of our community. I want to thank Lawrence Wintermeyer and all his team for all their hard work in preparation for today's summit and indeed for everything that they are doing for this community. For the City of London Corporation, the benefit of supporting this event, this organisation and this community, as I have outlined already, makes perfect sense. Supporting the future of financial services and benefiting all our communities in London and the whole of the UK. I wish you a successful and productive day today in driving this agenda forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Deloitte are our platinum sponsor for this year's summit, and I'm delighted to welcome next to the stage one of the firm's leading financial and technology experts. They recently partnered with Innovate Finance and Swift to produce a report on global fintech hubs, which we'll be hearing more about later this morning. But here to tell us more about the work they've been doing within the industry most recently, please welcome to the stage our speaker, James O'Rodden, senior partner and UK financial services leader. James. Thank you for those kind words. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, fellow delegates, it is a really exciting to be here at the world's leading fintech conference in such a memorable and historical building. I am mindful of the contrast between the past and the future that will merge here over the next two days. We at Deloitte are delighted and very proud to sponsor this event. Our sponsorship of this summit builds upon a partnership with Innovate Finance, which has seen us engaged in initiatives together around fintech, fintech over, the over the last couple of years. Now, over the next two days, we will look at the achievements of the fintech sector and the challenges facing financial services as a result. The summit will examine the impacts as well as the features, change, competition, shifting customer preferences, new entrants, technological advances. These are, are things that have been shaping financial services and the economy for years. But critically, this exciting change is moving more rapidly than anything we've seen in recent history in financial services. We see the fintech sector as a part of a greater movement 
that is driving forward financial services and society as a whole. And it's a point that I will return to later. As you could imagine, we at Deloitte, we've been analyzing disruption in financial services as a matter of course. In 2014, we began working with the World Economic Forum on the future opportunities and challenges in financial services. We explored the rise of the fintech and identified back then that the fintechs tended to concentrate on segments of the value chain which were both high in profitability and where the customer experience can be improved by technological innovations. However, time has moved on. As everyone here knows, fintech is well into its next stage of growth. As activity is expanding rapidly, and we are now seeing fintechs, fintechs beginning to provide a more holistic offering to the marketplace. This growth is being enabled by three forces, which will be explored in detail over the next two days. One, change your customer preferences, indeed more demanding customer preferences. Advances in technology, both in building a business, but also for consumers being able to access these new services. And most importantly of all, a pro-innovation regulatory environment. Developing alongside rapidly is a maturing and aligning ecosystem. If you take a look at the delegate list or even look around this audience here today and the participants, you'll see technology companies, startups, investors, capital providers, advisors, incumbents, governments, regulators, all playing their part to make this ecosystem work. At Deloitte, we've been involved in the ecosystem for some time now. Over the last number of years, it's been fascinating to see fintech continue to expand right across the marketplace, from transactional banking, to robo-advice, to money management tools. You only need to look at this growth and the spread to know that fintech is not a one-off. That is why we have partnered with Innovate Finance. Our joint work not only includes the Global Summit, but also the Big Bang Series and Money Talks initiative. So why is fintech so critical to a firm like Deloitte? Obviously, it's the opportunity, but also the disruption the innovation it is bringing to financial services, and indeed the disruption and change it is bringing to firms like Deloitte. As a big four firm, we fundamentally embrace the fintech revolution because of the wide opportunities and the drivers for change it presents to the market and to firms like ourselves. It encourages movement of talent and people. It encourages a more diverse workforce. It drives competition, it enhances choice, it promotes financial inclusion, it agitates for change and innovation, it breaks down barriers to entry, and most importantly, it challenges us. Our work in the fintech center, sector covers a wide spectrum. As you would imagine, we have invested in some startups, we've created our own fintech hub at WeWork, we have a partnership with 500 startups who are here today, to form a game-changing acceleration program called Upside, which brings incumbents and fintech startups together. But more importantly, we're helping startups navigate the regulatory environment as they develop a more holistic market offering. Working with and investing in the blockchain settlement startup Settle, who are going to be speaking today about their experience in scaling up and also their experience with uh, being part of the FCA regulatory sandbox. And lastly, disruption to our own firm through an internal project using fintech technologies has identified some stark lessons for us concerning the future of our business model. Amid the success, we cannot lose sight of the challenges we all face in the ecosystem and the economy as a whole. History shows us that rapid progress, disruption, and success can breed an arrogance in us, and it can come to the cost of others. New technologies haven't yet driven the gains in productivity we might have expected. Business pro productivity since the introduction of the internet has grown at its slowest rate in almost 40 years. Indeed, 
80% of the companies tell us their employees are overwhelmed, yet we continue to throw more at them. Technologies such as AI, robotics and cognitive automation are going to pose major challenges to the workforce. Businesses would need to focus to ensure these technologies are used in a way that truly augments rather than diminishes or overwhelms their employees. That is why at Deloitte we have created a program called One Million Futures. It's our five-year strategy which aims to help one million people get to where they want to be, overcoming barriers to education and employment, and giving individuals the skills and opportunities to succeed. It is also our way to ensure that our work specifically within fintechs goes beyond helping startups to scale, or indeed incumbents to respond to the disruption. We see the social and economic opportunities for the UK and the global economy. But we have already a social mobility challenge, as the job market increasingly segregates into the low-skill, low-pay and high-skill, high-pay segments, we must manage the risk of further division in society between the haves and the have-nots. In the UK, for instance, we have found that the participation rate in higher education among young people and the most disadvantaged communities can be ten times lower than those of the wealth wealthiest. Given that the Future of Work initiative will increasingly reward high education and skills, income inequality may yet widen. So if anything, today and tomorrow I am looking forward to learning more about the work that this ecosystem is doing to advance financial services, the economy and society as a whole. In particular, the, lessons, uh, the, sorry, the sessions on financial inclusion, financial wellness and Gates Foundation on the Unbanked will be truly revealing. So to sum up, this is a great time to be in the fintech sector. As I say to my team, it's an opportunity to explore and to fail, to learn and to try again. A quote from the great Irish playwright Samuel Beckett best describes the innovative spirit that the fintech sector has brought to financial services. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. Enjoy the event and thank you for your time. So, to tell us more and the impact that this will have on the consumer, please welcome Nick Ogden. I always get worried when the announcement before you speak is so great, you think, what on earth is going to come next? Anyway, thank you, Lawrence, and everyone at um, uh, Innovate Finance for organizing what promises to be yet another fascinating summit for you. Um, we have to, in all of these um, presentations, I guess, uh, this week, uh, reflect back at a macro scale um, on what's happening globally. So we need to consider, I guess, what Mr. Trump is doing, the events over the weekend, uh, Brexit and how all that's going to shape out, but also things like PSD2 and financial inclusion, which, um, believe it or not, in the UK, we still don't have full financial inclusion. Um, no doubt during the week you will all uh, discuss how continuing investment uh, into the industry uh, and innovation will shape and develop progress in financial services over the next 12 to 18 months. But I want to talk to you this morning about innovation that's closer to home. Indeed, uh, the UK market, uh, which continues to be at the forefront of change in financial services, a position I think we're all proud to see recognised globally. I started in this industry in the late 1980s, um, and I no doubt, like Sir Tim, who will be joining the platform shortly, uh, will remember the sound of a 1200 board modem trying to make a telephone connection to actually something called the internet. Um, sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. Um, this was probably, however, sometime before many of you were born, um, and certainly before fintech became a term that graces every newspaper every day, everywhere in the world. I was very, very fortunate to help um, lead some of the innovations that led to the creation of e-commerce, working on a variety of business ventures uh, that led to the creation of WorldPay back in 1995. Um, 
like you, like many of you here today, I know how it feels um, to experience, experience scepticism about uh, your ideas, especially when they challenge the status quo. Uh, and I always, I've always re reveled in the chance to prove that mainstream adoption of the internet uh, presented a huge commercial opportunity and a transitional event in history and communication and human, in, human interaction. Long before Amazon was anything other than a tropical rainforest, we had already built an online shop on a small island in the English Channel called Jersey. And it's hard to look back now and remember the energy it required to persuade banks and high street retailers that online was the way to go. That was in 1995 with a project called Barclay Square, which was the world's first bank-endorsed e-commerce initiative, which some of you may remember. If the Innovative Finance um, Global Summit had taken place back then, there'd have just been a few of us down the pub having a beer. It's therefore a pleasure to be at this year's summit and to stand in front of such a packed room full of policymakers, regulators, entrepreneurs, um, and leaders of innovation. And it fills me with substantial optimism for the future to tangibly see how much groundbreaking progress has been made in our industry uh, in the last few years. The change has not been easy, and the innovation battle uh, is far from complete. In fact, it never will be. The desire for improved market access in financial services is a trend that has prevailed throughout my 30-odd years um, in the financial services sector. Our online financial services industry has evolved enormously since the mid-90s into what has now become a complete web of infrastructure services. But this has to be balanced against cyber threats, identity and financial crime challenges, and legacy platforms and networks in the delivery of our key financial services. Market access and structural reform opportunities and perhaps perceived competitive threats remain key challenges from many of our oldest, most established financial institutions. In the UK, we have meet, seen many market entrants and new challenger banks appear and launch in the UK. And although there have been significant regulatory support for reform, I'm sure that I speak for many of you here today who will agree that when I say the markets still face serious limitations in the way that your business can integrate, compete, and flourish. In fintech, straight through processing is the norm. In global financial services, um, it, it remains a challenge that directly impacts everyone. The fact that thousands of international payments and, and domestic payments get lost or delayed every day is now inexcusable. The mar this market contagion is where my idea for Clearbank came from to change the norm and open the market and start, st start in a started in a chance conversation in a conference in 2014. And as an, as an aside, my only advice to you all today uh, is to make sure that you do your follow-ups after this con uh, uh, conference completes, um, because without that, Clearbank would not have been born. I believe that a banking revolution could only truly be unlocked by creating a new bank that was not burdened by the challenges associated with legacies. Um, those legacies are often and have often been um, inherited through consolidation. We at Clearbank challenged the status quo, maintaining that we all required a new bank. It had to have exactly the same capabilities as the principal and existing agency banks in the UK, but it had to be standalone and with no reliance on them. That meant connecting to all of the payment schemes, getting all of the systems up and operational in place, um, and starting to de deliver new levels of customer standards, associated service levels, and an open market environment. Meeting these challenges head on in February, just over six weeks ago, we announced the, the arrival of Clearbank. Somehow we had managed to keep the project silent for three years. Uh, I still don't know how we managed to do that, but we were uh, uh, apparently the first new clearing bank in 250 years to arrive in the UK. Um, we had a unique opportunity, and for those of you in startup land, which I've done a number of, the major opportunity that you have as a startup is you have no customers, so nobody's nagging you, and you have no legacy, so you don't have anything to follow. So we had that opportunity. 
And as we move forward to open our doors uh, later this year, um, we're looking to support the whole financial services ecosystem from banks, financial institutions, FCA regulated businesses, uh, and of course the fintech sector. We intend to deliver faster, cost-effective, and, and uh, appropriately uh, market-specific services. And we've achieved that through building state-of-the-art technology. I remember talking to the FCA about a thing called the cloud, and as they looked out of the window, I said, no, it's not that one. Um, we've worked very, very closely with Microsoft to have helped us develop a global leading platform, um, which is now being deployed in the UK. Um, and we're the first bank ever in history to concurrently connect to all of the UK payment schemes and dare take the challenge of turning the switch to put them all on uh, on, the first, on, on the same day. Um, the interesting fact was six and a half weeks ago, nobody had heard of us. We didn't even have a website. Uh, we had a thing called CB Infrastructure, which some of you may have heard of, uh, which HSBC thought stood for clever business, but they found out it didn't. Um, and the results of the last six weeks have shown that there is massive demand for change in the delivery of financial services in the UK. Whilst we guessed that might be the case, we now know that to be the case. We've developed what we believe are simple systems to help the market. We have a single ISO 2022 interface to allow you to connect. It's very simple and it changes the norm. And Lawrence kindly asked if we could share with you a, a video and an animation that we showed at our launch. And so enjoy the next minute. It's far better than listening to me. Um, hopefully the, the benefits of what we've done or we've been building over the last three years will be of great help to many of you in this room. And I sincerely hope that we can work with you and help you drive your projects forward. I believe that if, by working together, uh, we can catalyze the financial innovation that both fintech startup and established firms are bringing to market, we can all help accelerate product innovation and the adoption of many necessary and needed new financial products and services. This should also help improve financial inclusion, especially in the UK, where 39 building societies with 3 million customers do not provide current account services to their own members. And further down within the credit union section, the ability to provide current accounts to people in the, the, the lower echelons of the, the social uh, market in the UK do not have access to current account banking. Many of the policy makers and, and industry leaders in this room have worked immensely hard to ensure that the UK is a fintech friendly regulatory environment. We have definitely benefited from that. We've had three years of outstanding support from the FCA, uh, the PRA, the Bank of England, etc. Um, that said, before any of you run off and think you want to have a go at doing this yourself, many of you will have heard of the saying regulatory burden. To put some context into that, our regulatory submission was two and a half thousand pages and weighed 14 kilograms. So that is the weight of regulatory burden that you have to face to go through creating one of these things. Um, I see a lot of wry smiles in the room, so I'm certain some of you have tried to do this before. We believe that by solving the market access challenge and changing the dynamics of engagement into the core of UK banking services, uh, we could accelerate the market um, uh, the, the adoption of services and the market growth. And the outcome of the last few weeks in relation to inquiries and market uh, interest that we have uh, strongly support that. Since the days of pioneering e-commerce and building WorldPay, I've learned a lot of things about growing businesses in financial services. Now, I am highly optimistic about the future of innovative financial services because there's a clean and clear playing field for everybody to have fun in. I hope you enjoyed the summit, and I urge you to leave with fresh ideas on how to continue your own contribution to the financial innovation industry. Whilst here, forge new uh, relationships and connections, and please remember to do the follow-ups. And finally, every one of you in this room can be an agent for change. Just go and do it. Thank you. <laughs>